Hi everyone, um, I've got my video on just so you know what I look like, but I am going to turn it off in a bit because it's, it seems to be sometimes a bit distracting. Okay, so welcome to the BTEC Tech Awards 2022, marking and moderation for internally assessed com components for enterprise. So hopefully you are all here for the enterprise. Um, I am Rima Solanki, as you've just heard. I'm actually a standards verifier for the Legacy Tech Award and have been working with BTEC and Pearson for over 14 years now. So um, seen quite a lot of the qualifications over the years. Right, um, we've got actually a lot to get through today. So um, please do hold on to questions if you have them, um, put them in the chat. If there are questions that you think, you know, you want me to answer and I'll try and answer them as I can when I go through. Um, but like I said, we've got a lot to get through. So I am conscious that we are a little bit tight, um, two hours to be able to fit everything in. Okay, so the aims of the session today, it is literally about understanding how the mark schemes work um, for the new tech awards um, and how the best fit approach is actually working. Looking at uh, Pearson set assignments and what the difference is with that and the um, assignments we've had in the past with the legacy using exemplar standardization materials. And we'll have some time today to actually hopefully walk through a few of those and uh, parts of them. Looking at how the moderation process works, how uh, the series runs, what the admin procedures are, um, awarding and grading uh, results, and where you can actually get further support. There are going to be lots and lots of links as we go through today. Um, do not worry about them um, too much. I will make sure those links are sent out after this training event. May not be today, but it should be sometime this week. Okay, so just let me know, like I said, as we go through, if there are any questions. Right. Okay. So the first thing is looking at um, the marking grids and what this actually means. Okay. It is in the assessment decisions decision section of the PSAs. Now the PSAs are the what we call the Pearson set assignments and I'm going to go on to that in a minute. We are using a best fit approach and I'll explain what that means as well. Basically it is a new system of marking where we have a 12 mark grid and three marks per band structure. It's meant to have a compensatory nature in applying marks rather than grades like we've been used to with the legacy tech award. Learners can have a really high performance against some skills and tasks and weaker performance in others, but we'll take the total marks forward towards the qualification outcome rather than taking away a pass for a component or you know, when they've had a mix of PMs and Ds across the work they might have done for that component. So this is how the compensatory nature works. OK, this is actually a, a huge benefit to learners going forward. I really want to actually stress the importance of marking using the descriptors and the marks available per task now, um, rather than that this historic idea of what past merit and distinction might look like. Internal components will now be awarded so that the mark constitutes uh, that constitutes a grade may be subject to change and it should not be used as a benchmark for determining a mark. What that means is the grade boundaries for each component in terms of raw marks change every year. And this is about fairness and I'll spend a little bit of time on that later as well. Um, there is this importance of getting this rank order really right for your learners and I'll spend a bit of time on that later as well. But basically it's to establish this accurate rank order and it's indicated in terms of the order of your highest and lowest achievement. Moderators, when um, you come to actually submitting marks to your moderators and this rank order, will feed back any issues found with rank order and allow for any amendments to be made uh, before those final marks go ahead. Now, there is a link on this slide for applying a levels ba based mark scheme. Um, it is um, on our YouTube channel, and I will make sure that that link is actually sent out later on um, after this training session. Okay, but it's really good watch. Um, it's really useful on how it actually all works because virtually every single tech award is the same in, in this whole 12 marks, three marks per mark band. So that's really useful. Okay, exemplar standardization materials. Some of you may actually have come across these. They are already on the website. Um, they are marked examples of learner work at low, medium and high for each internal component. 
They're used for internal standardization of all center assessors for these internally assessed components. They're supposed to be referred to throughout the year. Um, they're not really a template of how learners should be actually responding, but because there's lots of different ways that learners might actually tackle a task and answer a question and so on. But they're there for you to understand how marks are given, where marks can be given. Okay, they're already available, like I've already said. And the idea is we're going to build upon this archive um, over the next few series, um, be able to create this whole bank of resources so that you can actually look back and hopefully be able to see the real responses to live PSAs, you know, after we've gone through this first series, which should end in um, December this year. They're accessible on the subject qualification page. And again, I'll send links out to that later. This means actually you no longer need to log into OSCAR. Um, there's no longer registration needed for lead internal verifier on the OSCAR platform. No checks are now made by Pearson um, in terms of completing this, but it is your responsibility to make sure they're referred to and that you actually do standardize your assessors um, in, that, in your uh, centers, anyone who's actually delivering, assessing any of these components. It's actually in the Center Guide to Quality Assurance. And again, um, I'll make sure that's sent out in case you do not have it. And the idea is, is that we supply these standardization materials and it's meant to be an activity for your whole team um, for you to be able to also have that, those materials to refer to whenever you need to when you actually come to marking your own learner's work. Obviously, the materials we have right now are based on the example uh, PSAs, not the actual live ones. But like I said, over the years, we'll hopefully build that um, resource bank. Okay, I'm going to stop here um, just in case there are any questions. I'm hoping there won't be too many yet. Okay, so there's some people that can't get in. So hopefully Mark will sort that out and let those people in. Okay, Anna, hopefully someone will sort that out so far. Okay, for you. Uh, Mark, I think there's a problem um, with some people. So let's get that sorted out technical hitches. Right, so we've got what we call these Pearson set assignments. Now for component one, what that means is there's three tasks. It's approximately 11 hours. Um, we get lots of questions about these 11 hours. They are approximate. What we're saying is approximately six hours of monitored preparation time and five hours to complete the tasks. Some of your learners may not need that time. Um, some of your learners may need a little bit more and it all depends on how it fits in your timetable and how your blocks of lessons uh, may work. Okay, so they are approximate, they're not set in stone. Now, we've got task one, which is split into two parts. Um, that's all about selecting, researching appropriate enterprise, exploring activities, skills and characteristics of the associated entrepreneurs. Not much has changed there from the legacy um, tech award, apart from the fact that you only need to now look at one enterprise instead of two. Task two is about market research methods, so primary and secondary, um, evaluating and making recommendations for the actual research methods that enterprise may use. And task three, which is again split into two parts, one is for the PEST, one is for the SWOT, and it's about making those supported judgments on strengths and weaknesses and how they you may actually turn those into opportunities for that enterprise um, and how they might diminish any threats, okay? You're basically given four industries um, that then learners have to be able to choose an enterprise that fits in one of those industries. They're quite broad industries. Um, and it's a for-profit SME. Okay, they've got to pick an enterprise and it has to be a for-profit SME. These industries can change every PSA, series on series, all right? And the size, micro, small or medium, can change every series on series as well. And that enterprise they pick has to fit within the industries and fit within the size. The rest of the tasks stay the same, okay? There are marks given for each task, 12 for each part. And obviously there are five parts in total if you've done the adding with me. So that means there's 60 marks in total for the component, okay? <clears throat> right, okay, let's have a look at one of the mark grids. 
I do apologize. I've tried to fit it all on one slide so that I don't have to toggle through too much to show you exactly how this works. OK, um, it's basically these descriptors, which are really uh, important to ensure you've got this understanding of how to apply this best fit approach. So for the first task, and this is the mark band for the first part of task one. OK, it's literally where the uh, learners cover content in A1, A2 and A3 of the specification. So that's looking at um, appropriate enterprises that fit the industry and the size, uh, the aims of them, the activities, um, how the activities help to meet the aims. And the activities can be anything that the enterprise undertakes in its operations. OK, how this mark grid works, and you'll see this in this, um, or hopefully you can see this on, on the screen now, is you look at the work and you try and use this best fit approach. You need to review the work and you're making a holistic judgment on that part to which mark band you think the work most closely matches. Each mark band, if you actually have a look, um, contains a number of bulleted traits. Um, and a combination of these provides a descriptor of that expected performance in relation to that individual task within the assignment. If you've looked, the majority of mark bands have three traits. I think the only one that doesn't is for the pest. Okay, but the rest of them in this component have three traits. That's quite handy as well because it's three marks per mark band. So in essence, you could use that to make some sort of judgment about where you roughly think it fits. The learner's response does not have to meet all the characteristics of a mark band descriptor before being placed in that mark band. So as long as it meets more of the characteristics of that mark band than any other, it would fit into that. So for example, if you look at mark band two, um, which is the four to six marks, adequate knowledge and understanding of the activities of the aims of the selected enterprise. And there are three traits. So some activities are partially detailed, partially specific, and show a basic understanding of the selected enterprise. Partially developed, partial, partially logical reasons to show how those activities help to support the aims of this enterprise. And then the judgments on the impact of each activity are partially supported, partially relevant. Now they may get that first trait where they've looked at some activities and they're partially detailed, partially specific. They may then drop down into uh, mark band one, where it's simplistic, illogical reasons on how those activities help. But then when they make their judgment, it may either fall back into mark band two or even go into mark band three, um, where it's partially supported partially relevant in how those activities support the aims. And it's that, and, you, and therefore, the best fit approach would tell you, even though two traits are in mark band two, one trait is in mark band one, doesn't drop them down to mark band one. The best fit would mean it's probably most likely to be in mark band two. And then you've got to make that judgment of, is it um, towards the higher, the middle, or the lower end of that mark range for that mark band? And then you allocate a final mark accordingly, you may decide because one of those traits falls into mark band one, you may think, well, okay, it's not the best response for that mark band, but it's not the it's not the lowest of that mark band. So I'm thinking maybe it might be five out of the 12 marks for that task. Okay. If they meet the requirements of the descriptor fully, i.e. if they meet every single trait in that mark band fully, you should be prepared to uh, award full marks within the mark band. So the top is used for a learner's response that's as good as can realistically be expected in that mark band. If it only barely meets the requirements, but is better than the previous mark band, then you might consider awarding the bottom end of that mark band. So for example, you'll say, you could say, well, not all of it's limited. Not all of it's superficial. Um, some of it actually has a bit more explanation. Some of it has a bit more development. There is some evidence of research behind this. So it is better than mark band one. So it should fall into mark band two. And then you've got to make that judgment of, is it the lower end or the middle end? The middle could be uh, for those that's a reasonable match to the descriptor, might be a balance of some characteristics from what this mark band, other characteristics which are either barely met or fall into another mark band. Okay, where there's no evidence worthy of credit, obviously, you have to be 
able to award that zero marks as well. OK, now, if you actually look, the descriptors used in these mark bands are the same for each part of the component. So for mark band one, you'll have the descriptors such as limited, superficial, generic, simplistic, illogical, unsupported, irrelevant. All right, that will all fall into that first mark band. What that basically means is learners may have listed items without explanations. They may have used generic terms rather than in the context of the enterprise they've actually looked at. They may not have evidence of research or may have made points that are not relevant to that task or to that enterprise. There may not be many judgments made or recommendations. OK, so that's what you're kind of looking at for that first mark band. For the second mark band, it's descriptors such as adequate, partially detailed, partially specific, basic, partially developed, partially logical. You've noticed that the partially comes along quite a lot in this one. Um, partially relevant, partially supported. What that means is that learners may have shown some context, have some explanation of the points made, and there may be a little bit of research evidence there. You may feel that a little bit more of the content has been covered compared to you know, just listing things for Mark Band 1. And some recommendations and judgments may have been made, but they may not have been explained very well or supported very well with any evidence they found. OK, so that's where it fits into that Mark Band 2. In terms of Mark Band 3, it's things like good, most, uh, mostly detailed, mostly specific, mostly developed, and so on. You can see that. What that means is this is where learners are expected to show a strong understanding of the enterprise. Yeah, they know this enterprise. They've, they've researched it. They've made points that are explained well. There may be a few errors, um, but there is evidence of research. Most of the content has been covered well and is in context. Judgments and recommendations are made. Some good points have been made and links have been made. And there is a use, there is use of research. That usually would fall into that mark band three. Mark band four is the top end, comprehensive, all activities, fully detailed, fully specific, fully developed, and so on. This is what, where you would expect the top level to learner to be, where they have shown an in-depth understanding of an enterprise. There's context throughout. There's detail in the points made. There's strong use of research um, of this enterprise that they've used. Judgments are supported with the evidence and explained well. Recommendations will be clear, they'll be relevant to the enterprise and reasons for them given with the explanation using research. That is what you would expect your top end level two learner to uh, fit into, okay? There'll be very few errors in that mark band. If I go through, this is now for that second part of task one. Um, this is where they look at the skills and characteristics of the entrepreneur. And again, you can see how all those descriptors are the same for each mark band. OK, um, and that's basically what you will find when you actually go through um, the mark bands for any of these PSAs, that they are the same descriptors used throughout is to provide that consistent approach. OK, um, and it, for this section, just to let you know, it's most of the content of A4 of the specification, just so that you can look back and have a look. So what we're going to look at now is we're going to do a quick walkthrough of the first two parts. So task one, the full, full part of task one. Um, and I've taken this from the ESM material, so you may have had a chance to read through them. Um, you may have seen them on the website, you may have seen the materials I've sent to you, I've got sent to you as well. Um, but we're going to have a quick walkthrough. Now, just to explain about ESMs, like I said, uh, the work that's actually been made for these, they were take, they actually, it is actual learner work. It's taken from last year from the Legacy Tech Award. So it may not fit entirely with the current PSA sectors and size, but it's been the, basically the principal model principal moderators have been trying to make it fit with those sample PSAs. 
It's the first year of the qualification, like I've already said, um, it's been adapted from that legacy BTEC, and therefore some of the work has been supplemented by the principal moderators to ensure that those 12 mark, uh, mark schemes can be appropriately apply, applied. Um, the small adaptations mean that this evidence now reflects what we may expect to see in a normal series. Going forward, like I've already said, it will align more because there'll be a bank of materials of actual learner work, okay? Um, what I'm hoping you will have, if you can, is have a copy of the specification, um, have the mark bands up for uh, component one. If you don't, don't worry, I'll try and toggle through as we walk through anyway. And we're going to have a quick walkthrough of this first task. Um, I'm going to walk through the first one with you purely because of time and uh, making sure that we do have time to get through it all. And then I'll get you to have a look at the second one and see if you can see where you would give marks for it and see what marks you would give it. OK, so let's have a quick look. Now, you should have been sent this already. Um, if you haven't been, um, it was put in the chat. So I'm hoping you do have it in front of you now. This is what you should have been sent and we'll just skim through. I've, I've put in the um, set assignments in there, the sample set assignments for you as well, just so you can see uh, what they look like and what the tasks are. These tasks, like I said, will not change. The only thing that will change, I apologize for my scrolling, uh, will be the sectors here. And the other thing that will change uh, will be the size and that will be usually in this top part of the task. This one is for a micro enterprise, but you could have micro, small or medium. You could have a, even a, a choice of two, okay? So the rest of these tasks do not change. And there's, that's why I've put them in here, just so that you are aware of that. And the work that we're going to look at is actually based on this sample PSA. Right, so the first one, if you've got it in front of you, will be about this enterprise called Aspire Engineering Limited. Um, sorry, I'm just going to stop there because I've got a, a question I think is the right place to answer that question. Uh, Gina, I hope that's how I pronounce your name. Are we able to show snippets of the ESMs to our students? The ESMs are actually for um, assessors use. OK, um, they're not meant to be there for your learners. Um, they're for you to use so that you understand how, how it's marked. Um, and, and it's just so, you know, it, it's purely about the fact that they're not exemplars because people can take very different approaches to how it works. So I'm hoping that's answered your question. If not, hit me again later and I'll see if we, I can give you a better response to that. Okay, so this is um, Aspire Limited engineering limited now this learner has looked at this particular enterprise it's a micro limited company um, it's owned by these two people tony booth ian briggs now as you go through this and i'm gonna skim through it okay um they've said it's a limited company it's got a board of directors um they've explained a little bit what that means um that you know profits debts get shared between them um which slight error but they make a profit from their work owners work long hours it's said to you what type of employees they have um how many full-time part-time work the fact that tony and ian run this business um that supports this flexibility they have 30 people roughly working on and off um they then try to link this to the fact that it may help them meet their aim of making a profit OK, um, they have this plan to finance in case they need to hire more and so on. If you've noticed, it was quite a brief link to the aim. OK, then they talk about their location. They've included a nice little map, which is quite handy, where they are, where they're situated, how much it costs. Um, they've tried to, again, make a, a, a brief link to this meeting of the aim. Um, you know the fact that it's important for meeting the aim of making a profit, the lower the cost of a building, the more profit the company gets, and that's linking that to this whole fact of how much it costs them to be situated where they are. They've even gone a little bit further to say this is important, but not the most important. So there's a little bit of a judgment there. 
of why this is may not be the most important activity, as it were, um, because it lowers its costs. Okay. Then they've gone on to look at the online presence, the physical location, their social media presence, um, the fact they're on LinkedIn, and so on. Um, what that's actually telling you is again, it, it's that little bit of detail they've put in. They've thought about the fact that uh, they work uh, collaboratively um, with companies, with researching, problem solving, environmental issues. And then they've again tried to make this link about having this online presence, how it helps them meet the aim of making a profit. Because this advertisement that they can make um, is used online, it'll be easier to find them. Many customers have found them through these websites. Um, and it's really important as it ensures customers are aware of Aspire. That's a judgment. But if you notice that judgment isn't necessarily got that development that it would be nice to have. In terms of the link to profit, it's a link. Again, that development would have been nice to have a little bit more research behind this and showing that within this work. Then it goes on to uh, looking at uh, projects it's, it's actually worked on, um, the customer feedback they've had, um, the fact that uh, their customers come from UK and Europe and having the, most of their cu customers in UK and Europe is really important because those connections may be easier. Okay, um, they've not necessarily, you know, done the best link there, but they have tried to link it again about trying to be flexible with their customers. So again, there is some linkage there. There is some detail, there's some attempt to explain. Okay, if you then go on further, they've then gone on to look at the fact that they are uh, working on is this is farm uh, to reduce carbon emissions. They've explained this uh, of why they're doing it. Um, the fact that they've got now these electric quad bikes and these bikes worked really well and why they actually thought they could sell more of them. And they've linked that again to this aim of producing innovative products. And then they've actually said so far they've made 60. And then they've tried to link it again, this project is called. And then they've gone slightly further as well by saying it's innovation is a key aim of Aspire. So that's a little bit of judgment again. It's allowing this creativity. It's allowing them to develop new visions. Um, Aspire's used this skill here as they have realized this small project could be turned into something that can make a bigger profit. And that's linking to that profit aim as well. Probably the most important activity as it means they stay competitive and customers continue to use them. This is their USP. And if you notice that bit there, that is actually better judgments made in that last paragraph for this task than in the rest of it. So the links in this last paragraph are much better. Okay, I'm going to go back to the presentation and I want you to think about what mark, based on what I've just quickly zipped through, and I apologize for the quickly zipping through, what mark you would give this out of 12? Which mark band, let's first concentrate on the mark band, which mark band do you think that bit on Aspire Engineering and their activities and trying to link it to their aims, which mark band does it fit in? If you can quickly, put that down in the chat. I'm gonna give you literally a couple of minutes and see which mark band it fits in. I've got mark band three so far, mark band three. Some people have given it a nine, mark band three. We've got three, mark band three, nine, mark band three, nine marks, mark band three, four. Um, Top end of mark band two, I've got from somebody. I've got a lot of mark band threes. Um, some people are going to mark band two. Okay. Right, we've got mark band two again, mark band two. It, it's a bit of a mix, isn't it? Right. I'm going to uh, go back to it and we'll just quickly talk about what the um, 
moderator, principal moderator said about this. Now, just quickly scroll through so that you can see what I'm doing. Right. In terms of talking about the uh, limited company, their employees, um, the activity of actually employing people, the principal moderator felt was partially detailed. There's a reference to the number of employees. There is partial development into the reason of how this supports the aim of making a profit and planning and financing the project. It could have been more um, in terms of using that research. Um, I mean, there's a little nitpicky thing about the fact that it's 30 people, so does it fall under micro, but that's my nitpicky. Um, if you actually look then later about the decision making of where they're located and so on, um, there's a partial reason as to why this actually supports the aim of making a profit. There's an attempt in terms of a judgment of why it's an important activity, such as that lowering cost, which I mentioned, but it's superficial. It's not really supported because what you could have expected there for that support is what other facilities are, are there out there maybe? What other costs are there? Similar facilities, um, does it actually make, you know, where they're located is that actually important to them why is that location important to them um, and that's the bit that you would expect to link to the aim not necessarily the cost of that location if you go further in terms of the social media presence it's again it's this partially detailed it's linked to the aim i.e that whole making a profit if you look at the bottom of the paragraph but it's partially developed there is a logical reason of how it supports the same but um, it's superficial. It's not supported again with the research that they may have undertaken or even comparing it with like for like or, um, you know, do they know how many people have actually clicked through? Um, you know, is, is, do, they, do they get word of mouth recommendations, all that sort of thing as well. So had it been a little bit more explained, this would have gone further up the mark bands. Okay, so at the moment it's in that partially detailed, partially supported. Okay, um, if you actually go further in terms of uh, the projects they're working on, it's again partially detailed. It doesn't necessarily follow on very well to, a, to linking it to an aim, and it doesn't follow from the sentences that precede it in terms of. Uh, if you look at the last few sentences, they've looked at this fact that uh, they secure 25% profit on projects. And then they go on to look at customer feedback. And then they go on to say, well, customers come from UK and Europe. Doesn't necessarily link onto the fact that their customer feedback has proven, you know, not as flexible or, you know, more expensive for larger companies. So it doesn't quite link very well. In terms of this last paragraph, this paragraph would be in terms of um, where they've talked about uh, the farm. OK, that actually shows good understanding of the service. They have actually explained that quite well. There is a clear link to the aim of this innovative products. And that bit is mostly developed and mostly logical. And they've used examples. There's also further developed reasons as to how the enterprise innovates. So if you look at this and I go back to the um, mark band, if you actually look now, a lot of it was fitting into Mark Band 2. One bit of it was fitting into Mark Band 3. Now think, what mark would you give it out of the 12? Most of it fits in Mark Band 2. It's only that last paragraph, really, that would fit into Mark Band 3. So how many marks would you give it? I've got five, I've got six, I've got a lot of sixes. Yeah. Five, it's, it's tittering between five and six. It, the, the principal moderator actually give this, gave this six. Okay, that's what the principal moderator gave it. It was six because even though some of it went into Mark Band 3, but it was only some, and it was only that last paragraph and that little bit of a judgment that they thought was good, the rest of it fit into Mark Band 2. In fact, some parts were superficial, unsupported, um, and the links might not have been necessarily relevant. So there were tiny bits in Mark Band 1, most of it fit into Mark Band 2, and one paragraph, as it were, fit into Mark Band 3. So the principal moderator actually gave this six. 
Okay, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of how this works. If I go back to their work, we'll have a quick look at task 1B. This is talking about the entrepreneurs now. Okay, so they've got an owner, Tony Booth, and it gives you a bit of history of who uh, they worked for previously, Williams F1, um, why, that's in, you know, why that's important. You know, then it was about how they got together with Ian Briggs. Okay, uh, the little bit of history of where they worked. And then it goes on to um, the fact that they talked about the problems they've seen in terms of climate change, the environment, which is one of their aims, and that's a little link to an aim there. Um, so they decide to do something about it. And then they went on to make this company. Okay, they bought it, went limited in that particular year of 2015. Then it goes on to uh, looking at advice from other owners. Now remember, for this task, we're supposed to look at the skills and the characteristics of the entrepreneurs. Skills and characteristics and how they now link to the aims of the enterprise, okay? So uh, they've listened to different people, they've planned ahead, um, so planning. Um, they've thought about what pressures they've had. They have a good entrepreneurial mind mindset, you know, things such as being confident. It's a good skill to have as they can approach customers in a respectable, kind manner, which help with their customer service which is one of their aims. They're adaptable, okay? They're free to change, just parts of their business. No link necessarily to an aim there. Uh, they're visionary. They keep plans and aims for the future. It's good because that means the business can invest more time and money into certain things, tackle problems that occur. Not necessarily, again, a link to an aim there. These skills are essential to business owners as around 80% of SMEs in the UK fail within the first year. Um, and if they've not planned ahead or had the right mindset and skills, they wouldn't be successful. A little bit of a generic statement there, may not necessarily have anything to do with this particular enterprise. Then they go on to say they have a number of characteristics, uh, which they've looked at as the size of the enterprise, having two owners, although that could be negative, um, but is that necessarily looking at skills and characteristics of the entrepreneurs? That's what you have to ask yourself here. Is this relevant to this part? Okay. Um, to be successful, they believe in being ethical, having good customer service. These are their aims. So that's, again, just mentioning their aims again. Listening to customers' needs and giving them new ideas. That you could class as, as a skill, the listening part. Um, to make sure that customers are happy with the service and users aspire again or recommend it. They're likely to leave a good review, which helps them gain more customers. This will help them pay off their debts and increase profit. And we know that profit is one of their aims. So there is a slight linkage there to an aim, okay? And if you think about the skill of listening, that's what's covered in that paragraph. As we go further, it then goes on to, it's a business to business. Um, and it goes on to uh, looking at, it's different to other businesses, um, the fact that they're ethical and green. This kind of is evidence really for that first task bit, if you think about it that way. Uh, not necessarily the evidence here, but they talk about environmentally friendly. Um, they want to improve their profit. They want to make more of a difference in the environment. Companies may use Aspire because of political social pressures. These pressures and other businesses benefit Aspire because more companies are trying to blah, 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 find new adaptations and solutions. And that's where it ends. Okay. So again, let's think about this again. Let's quickly think about the fact that they've attempted to look at a couple of skills, a couple of characteristics. So things such as knowing your suppliers, the customer service, because that is, again, part of the skill, the listening, okay? The fact that they've done some research, they have some confidence, okay? They have adaptability and vision. Those are the characteristics and skills they've actually covered in these few paragraphs. Then you've got to make that judgment of, well, 
have they developed any of those? Any of them? Have they attempted to link these skills in terms of supporting the aims? Have they thought about the impact of those skills and characteristics? Which mark band do you think this falls into? And again, just quickly stick it in, into there, and we will see what people say. Debbie, while I've got you here and I've just seen your question, is this supposed to be marked by sectional holistically? It is meant to be holistic. If you actually look at what they've said, some of that would go to evidence of that first task. So you would look at the whole work and it is a holistic approach. I'm just splitting it up for ease of us looking through it, but it is holistic. Some of what they've said is that partial support for that first part of task one. Okay. Um, we've got mark band two, we've got mark band one. So we're tittering between mark band two and mark band one. People are saying low mark band two and so on and so on. Okay, so let's think about what the principal moderator said. Okay, principal moderator said, um, and they felt that as a whole, we've got to look at it, like we've said, um, they have thought about some skills and some characteristics. They had actually covered a good sort of three or four. Um, in fact, more than three or four. Some of the judgments fall more into mark band one, purely because they're unsupported on the whole. The section, however, regarding being ethical, um, it does show this good example, understanding of the enterprise. And like I said, that's more into that sort of first part, that task. Um, but in terms of this developing skills of knowing suppliers, their customer service, it's not necessarily expanded upon but there is some development, it's a partial development. There's also some partial development of skills such as the qualifications they have, their history, the fact that they are linking to this aim of climate change and environment and why they actually came about this idea of this business because of the skills they had, okay? Then you've got this partial development of research. They've not necessarily linked that to an aim though, okay? But there is this slight development of that research skill. They've thought about the fact that confidence um, the, the confidence they have. And again, that's partially developed, partially logical, and how that links to customer service. Adaptability, uh, sorry, let me try that again. Adaptability and vision are given and they are partially detailed. The links to aims are not necessarily strong. So part of this falls into Mark Band 1. Okay. Listening is given, how it supports the aim of customer service. And again, that was that link there. So it's a partial development. All right, the final paragraph um, is again showing this good understanding of the enterprise. Um, it is mostly detailed. It does sort of regard the activity and so on. Um, it is, in terms of the work as a whole, it is mostly logical. Um, you know, it's, it is there in terms of how this enterprise as a whole supports the aim, aims it has. So in terms of this, the principal moderator gave this again, top end of Mark Band 2. Um, they gave it six as a, on a whole, even though parts of the judgments fell into mark band one. But you can tell this, this, this learner knows this enterprise quite well. They have done some research. They have attempted to make those links. So it doesn't fall into mark band one. It's better than mark band one. But again, then we've got to make that judgment of where would we put it? Uh, it wouldn't necessarily fall into the bottom and end of Mark Band 2 because they have tried to make those links and they have tried to develop those links in some places. So you've then got to decide, is it a five or a six? Now, the principal moderator gave this a six because they felt the majority of the work is a Mark Band 2. OK, so on the whole, it fits into Mark Band 2 and they gave it the top end. OK, so that's what they gave it and I'm going to give you the answers here because I don't think they're on your slide deck <laughs> okay so you can write them down if you want so task 1a was given six and task 1b was given six um, Anthony I'm going to stop there uh, can the task be spread over a number of weeks or would you suggest having the class together for five hours to complete the task I would not suggest anything that one is completely up to you it all depends on how your timetabling works and how you feel it would work best for your learners um, there's nothing stopping you from spreading it over a number of weeks. There's also nothing stopping you from doing it, as it were, under exam, sort of a situation where you have them in for a whole day and do it all in one shot. Okay, that is up to you. 
I, I can't dictate that. Pearson wouldn't dictate it to you. That one is up to you. It says it in the PSA, actually, um, that what the rules and regulations are, as it were. Uh, Kirsten, um, can I come back to that question? Because I'm going to cover that later. All right, so hold on to it. If I don't answer it, nudge me again. Okay, I'm hoping that was okay. Because now this is where you now get involved. And I stopped talking for a tiny bit. I want you to look at this next piece of work, okay? Which is the second bit. I will scroll through in just in case you don't have it in front of you. But now I want you to again, think about first, the most important thing is which mark band you would put it in. Then we'll decide on what mark you would give it, okay? In that mark band. So the second piece of work is this one. It's about escape box. So I'm hoping you've got this in front of you. If you don't, uh, please download it. Uh, I think it's you'll have to scroll up in the chat to be able to see it and download it. But I want you to quickly look through it. I'm not going to give you very long, uh, but do scroll through. Have a look at what they've said about this enterprise. Again, think about the links, the aims they make. Have they used their research? Have they developed any of the points that they're making? Um, are they clearly linked to these aims that you can actually see are listed? Um, what is the evidence they've used? And so on. And then the judgments they've made. What's the impact of those activities? How much of an impact? And I want you to go through and have a look at the first task. And again, try and look at it holistically with the second part as well. And then look at the entrepreneurs. And in this case, it's looking at Zane. And again, this person's actually put it in a, in a table. You don't have to put it in a table. Um, in fact, sometimes tables can restrict the detail, uh, but have a look and see um, what have they said about skills, characteristics, how they link to the aims. And again, have they made judgments and where you would put this? Okay, so I am going to hopefully allow you to just read through it on your own. If you need me to scroll down, do let me know, but I'm going to go back to the top right now. Um, and then we'll come back, I would say about 23 past and see what you would give it. Okay, so 12 for Mark, out of, out of 12 for task 1A, what would you give it? Out of 12 for task 1B, what would you give it? Okay, um, and let's see what you think. Yes, Fabio, um, you are right. Um, like I said, I'll come on to that in a minute, um, you know, after we've had a look through this and it will be really clear, hopefully. I'm just conscious of the fact I might need to put the mark bands up. So I will put the mark bands up. Hopefully you've got this work to look through.
Okay, I'm going to give you another minute or so. Um, I've got some people that have put answers in. I've got a nine, Mark Band three. Let's see what others say. I've um, got Mark Band four. Got Mark Band three, Mark Band four. Is this for both tasks, task 1A and task 1B? Got eight. I've got a mark band three. Yeah. Um, and Gina's put yeah for me. Yes. So for both, for both, you think it's the same mark band? Yep. I've got nine. Task one B seems stronger. High mark band three. Okay. I've given it. 1B, maybe I've given it a nine, okay. So again, think about that, the uh, descriptors in there. Would you say it's mostly? Would you say it's fully? Because I know people are tittering between three and four. Think about what you would expect a level two learner to do. You know, when we're talking about level two learners, we're anything between 14 and 16 years of age. So where would you think that would fall? Got fours and right. Shall we have a quick look at what we think? Because we're tittering between Mark Band 3 and Mark Band 4. So let's have a quick look. Right. Um, sorry, that was for the first one. Let's have a quick look. Right. Escape box. They've told you where it's located. They've told you, you know, for one of their products, what they charge. A little bit of history um, about who owns it, how many people work there. Their aims. Their aims are just listed. So I'm going to just point that out. Um, they have a range of different products. They've, you know, said what they are. Then they've looked at this activity of stock management how it helps to ensure their website's up to date, uh, helps them achieve their aim of being the best online retailer. So there's that little bit of link there. Then they've actually gone on to making a little bit of a judgment. This is a supporting activity that helps achieve all of the aims. It therefore does not have a direct impact, but has sufficient impact that if it did not take place, then all the other functions will fall in turn and so on. And they've gone on to explain that a little bit more. Then they've looked at sourcing new products, uh, they have linked that to, again, aims and this whole guaranteeing these suppliers, keeping your suppliers happy, what the impact of that is, why it's good to be different to others, okay? Um, and again, linking that to the aims. Then they've looked at another activity, which is photography, what the impact of that is, why it's important for them, They've given examples of some photography they do. So there's evidence use. Um, and again, where they reckon it fits on the important scale. Um, customer service is another activity. What the impact is, what is the evidence, and so on. So they've looked at four main activities. OK, so even though they started with this superficial list of activities and aims, the work then goes on to develop them. Um, they've actually discussed activities which are, in terms of a level two learner, fully developed. There are logical reasons as to how those activities of stock management, website maintenance, actually supports the aim of being the best online retailer. There's then made this judgment on the impact of those activities, which are supported by this quote from the entrepreneur. It's fully relevant to the activities of stock management and website maintenance, the link to the aim um, of creating moments of happiness as well. They then looked at uh, those innovative products and it's fully detailed and specific to the enterprise, clear link to ensuring high brand standards, excellent reputation. There's this evidence that's quite comprehensive, fully supported judgment. And again, relevant to this enterprise in context and to the aim. Um, They've looked at in terms of um, having high brand standards, looking at the screenshots, the fact that they've put in a screenshot of a review, they've put in a screenshot of their photography, 
the customer service, um, how it supports their aim of being best online retailer, along with a fully supported judgment using um, the reviews. And again, this whole judgment of without excellent customer service, customers would not return or become new customers. This supports them being the best online retailer. Um, customer service means they are used again and again by customers. And then it says reviews on their website confirm this. So actually, the principal moderator gave it Mark Band 4 and actually thought that this was about the best you're going to get from a level two learner. Um, and you'll see later when they talk about the entrepreneurs, there is more on terms of activities and aims um, as you go through in task 1B. Um, and actually gave it a 12. So they gave this one a 12 out of 12. It's probably as, as good you, as you're going to get. In terms of, you've got to think about the time limit they're, they're working in as well. Okay. If you look at the second task where that again talks about the entrepreneur, they've done this, like I said, in a, in, a, in a table. But if you look in this table where they've looked at the characteristics and skills, such as passionate and driven, you know, um, they've actually explained each of those uh, characteristics because that's passionate and driven is characteristics. They've explained them. They've actually said how it supports their aims. Um, you know, uh, the fact that it supports their purpose of the enterprise without being passionate and driven. You know, what would it mean? They'd hardly break even. They've then looked at dedicated and resilient. Again, those are the characteristics. So they've looked at another set of characteristics here, how they've been resilient. Where is this proof of being resilient? Where's the evidence they've used? So they've given an example of an incident. Okay. Um, then they've looked at their communication skills, given a judgment of what they think are their communication skills. How is this important? Why does it link to this enterprise? Okay. Is it in context? It is. There's a lot of detail here. They've looked at the ability to compromise. Again, very detailed. Um, and so on. Time management skills and so on. I could carry on. Then they've got this conclusion about how they adopt those characteristics and skills, how it links to the aims. They've made this judgment of what the impact is on the aims and how large they think that impact is. Time management skills allow him to prioritize. This needs to be done to become more successful, to continue and to improve. This has a big impact on the aim of the enterprise to deliver that extraordinary to people. As without having that skill, of uh, negotiating, organizing, financial management would not be done to provide the customers with their escapes when they buy and book them. The entrepreneur's got this ability to manage their own time. Why that's important? They've linked it again to the aims. So this end conclusion-y bit is those judgments and it's really breaking down on how these characteristics and skills um, are helping them meet their aims. Why? what this entrepreneur has has made them successful okay so that's what they have done it's really comprehensive judgments supported by quotes from the entrepreneur fully relevant to the aims of the enterprise okay uh, throughout this conclusion lots of quotes okay linked to that aim of a high brand standards this aim of delivering extraordinary you know the work is logical as well in terms of a level two learner, there's pretty much not, well, there's not much else they could have done. It is, if you look at the mark bands, comprehensive. They have shown a comprehensive understanding of the skills and characteristics. They have detailed them. They are specific. There is a deep understanding of the entrepreneur. They're developed, they're logical. They have made comprehensive judgments about the impact of the skills and characteristics in helping support the aims of this enterprise. Okay, so in terms of this, it falls into Mark Band 4. Okay, so that was actually given. And I'll go on to that. Here you go. It was given 12 marks for each part. Evelyn, yes, to clarify for Aspire, it was uh, six and six for each of the tasks. And for this one, Escape Box, it's 12 and 12. 
So this is what we would call the high end, the best you're going to get, really. Um, you can tell they've done a lot of research. They know this enterprise really well. They've talked to this entrepreneur. They found out about this entrepreneur. They've really tried to think about how it works and links to all those aims. OK, so there you go. There's component one. I'm hoping that's a little bit makes more sense. And sorry, I've had to rush through. <laughs> it's just two hours. We've got to try and get through two components. Um, so I'm very conscious of that. OK, um, stop me if you need to, but I'm going to quickly whiz through what component two is about. Now, those of you that have uh, delivered the de legacy will know what this is about. It's about a business plan and then presenting it and reviewing. So this component is now uh, two tasks. Um, we've given it again approximately 13 hours. I am saying approximately and I'm going to just keep saying approximately because we, like I said, we get so many questions on this. It's approximate. They, need, they may need a certain amount of prep time. Um, again, depending on your timetabling, when you can get them to do this research and, and preparing themselves and so on. And roughly seven hours to complete the tasks. In terms of the two tasks, the first task is about this choosing and rejecting ideas from micro enterprise. All right, this first task is actually split into three parts. And again, each part has 12 marks to it. Okay, so two parts of this, for the business plan one part of it is for the choosing and rejecting ideas now in the legacy we uh used to have uh, three ideas now you don't you have two ideas and they then dismiss one reject one give reasons for why and they then choose to take one forward the one they choose to take forward they then develop a business plan and the way this works is you're given a budget the budget doesn't change it's 50 pounds OK, you're just, again, given different industries that um, the, these enterprises could fit into. So as long as the enterprise they've chosen, the two enterprises, as it were, they've decided on at the beginning fits into those industries. It's perfectly fine. And think about realism. It's got to be realistic for a 14 to 16 year old. You know, think about the fact that they can't get a loan. They can't drive. You know, so it has to be realistic in that sense to try and fit into this task two is this whole production delivery and review and that's split into two parts the first part is for the production and delivery of the presentation and the second part is for their review and it's a self-review now doesn't require an audience anymore um, doesn't require qu answering questions or anything along those lines it does require them to video themselves because they have to watch themselves back to be able to review themselves on how they did in their presentation. Uh, Rima, can we go through task two and three of component one? Um, I, I cannot right now, um, purely because of our time elements. I've only been able to go through parts of those. They are in the ESMs you've been sent. Um, so I'm happy to talk to you about it at the end, if, if you would like, okay, if we've got time if that's all right, Mira. Um, right. In terms of uh, the context of this assessment, we, we, like I said, we now give it to you. They give them three contexts. They, they try and fit their enterprise ideas into that. And like I said, the budget does not change. And again, it's 12 marks for each part. So even though there's two tasks, each task has got various parts to it. So 12 marks for each part. There's five parts in total. So again, 60 marks. OK. And again, I've tried to squish on the, the mark bands onto one slide. Um, right. This time I am concentrating on task 1B. The reason I'm concentrating on task 1B is because that's the business plan and the business plan is split into two parts. So by this point, they've already chosen out of the two ideas they've had, which one? they've chosen to go ahead with and they then decide to do their business plan on the one they decide to go ahead with and they're given reasons why they've rejected the other one okay um and it makes sense to just do the business plan as a whole 
All right, so we're just concentrating on the business plan bit. Um, I'm not going to look at the presentations or the review today because we will not have time. So I do apologize, but again, welcome for you to ask me questions at the end about those as well. Right, again, if you look here, very similar um, approach here. If you look at the traits for the first part of task 1B, this is looking at aims, features, pricing, promotion, and resources in the business plan. The descriptors are the same. So for level, sorry, for mark band one, it's things like limited, simplistic, unrealistic. You know, those are the, the, the descriptors. For mark band two, it's adequate, partially detailed, partially relevant, partially uh, realistic, and so on. Mark band three, it's good. Okay, mostly detailed, mostly relevant, mostly realistic. And then of course, mark band four, comprehensive, fully detailed, fully relevant, fully realistic, and so on, fully supported. As you can see, those descriptors do not change. Uh, no problem, Fabio. Um, so they don't change. Again, if you notice for this part of task 1B, there are three traits, okay? First trait looks at aims, features, pricing, and promotion. Second trait looks at physical, financial, and human resources. Third trait looks at all of the requirements, but how the research supports it, okay? So there's three traits. So if you think about it, you could think about, okay, well, this section of the business plan fits into this trait. This section of the business plan fits into that trait. And then how have they used the research? Have they used it to support the things they've done in the other bits? Okay, so that's that first part of task 1B. The second part of task 1B is then the second part of the business plan. And we give you a template. They have to use the template we give you um, for the business plan. So it kind of does, you, you'll be able to see on that template where it roughly fits. Okay, second part of the business plan is about the financial planning. So that's uh, break even, cash flow, profit and loss. Okay, the forecasting, the records, the viability, the risk assessment, all of that comes into this part of this task. Okay, again, if you look at the descriptors, they're the same. Okay, limited is that mark band one, adequate is mark band two, good is mark band three, comprehensive is mark band four. And again, we've got three traits. The first trait is that financial planning, forecasting, and records. Are they complete? Are they accurate? Are they realistic? The second trait is all about the risk assessment. And the third part, the third trait, as it were, is all the requirements in terms of the research and the viability judgment they make. Viability judgment. And if you look at viability judgment, it's things like, have they supported the judgment using the financial data they've got, thought about the safety requirements, the ethical issues, and the legal issues and environmental issues that they need to think about. Those are the things. They're actually listed there. So, you know, when you're looking at the work, you could actually tick off and say, well, okay, they might have used the financial data. Oh, they've not thought about safety, but they've thought about ethical. They've thought about environmental. Um, they haven't really touched on legal. And then that kind of gives you an idea of roughly which, what you would put that trait in, which mark band would you put that trait in and so on. Okay, so that's what, again, how this would work. And again, you don't have to get the trait, all three of those traits in a mark band to get that mark band. Some could be higher, some could be lower. Um, and again, it's that best fit approach. And you will get a business plan template with the PSA for this. Um, and again, I'll make sure that those are sent out to you, the example template. Um, and if you're doing the legacy qualification and doing component two, you can actually use that template right now for the legacy qualification too. In terms of looking through the materials, uh, again, I'm gonna walk through one with you. Um, and again, here's the PSA. Um, and I said to you, you, you're given sectors or, ideas as it were industries 
that their ideas are meant to fit into. So for the example PSA, it was technological, digital, social media, e-commerce idea, or it was an event, or it was a sustainable environmental idea. And they have to do two ideas. And as long as they fit into any of those, doesn't even have to be all of them, can be one, can be two, the ideas can be completely different as long as they fit in those. And you're given this budget of 50 pounds. The rest of the tasks do not change, they're the same, PSA on PSA. So if we go through, here is one of them. Uh, the first enterprise we're gonna be looking at is an enterprise called Vidya. Okay, um, and this is the template they filled in. So this is a business plan template they filled in. Okay, so in terms of this uh, enterprise, this is what the learner has now, as it were, filled in. Okay, they've thought about what their opportunity is, um, said what they wanna do, um, what the service is and why. Their target market, so my customers will be from an age range of 16 to 40 years old. This is because uh, the designs I'll make create, you know, will be broad. Um, also, it won't be designed for young kids because they can't buy stuff online. I won't be targeting older people above 40 because they may not be interested in the design. Also, most socials have a minimum age, so I can't target kids that are 12 years old and less. So they've given it some explanation of why they've chosen that target market. In terms of their goods and services, uh, they've decided they're going to be video editing. Why they've chosen that, they've got experience, they've thought it's easy, um, they've watched tutorials, they've also done it in the past for their friends, for their family. Um, they also think it's going to be low cost. They've got all the equipment, kind of makes sense for them. Um, it can be easily done to fit around their school um, and so on. And, and then they've actually thought about online editors and what they charge. Okay, so they've, they've given a bit of an explanation here of why, why they've chosen the, their service, as it were. The given budget doesn't change, so that's 50 pounds anyway. And the, this uh, figure of trading profit, uh, we will, that comes on to when you look at the financial information. In terms of the aims, they've then looked at um, some of these aims. Uh, you know, it's called Vidya. What their main feature is, um, and then it goes on to, I'm trying to just quickly go through, my service will range from five second videos. Um, I'll be a sole trader. Uh, if I borrow, uh, it's not clear in terms of here exactly what they're doing, but they're, they're looking at their ownership. Financial aims, um, they wanna break even over the first 12 months. You've got to ask yourself, is that smart? Is it, is it a smart aim? Does it fit into those smart parameters? Uh, why it's important to them? Um, you know, even after breaking even, what will that mean going beyond in the second year? They've then thought about their non-financial aim. They want to get four and a half stars out of five on social reviews over the first 36 months. Again, is it a smart aim? Have they then explained it? And this, they have actually gone further they've linked it they've said why it's realistic um why they need to make sure that you know they give this customer satisfaction you know they want to be this business that becomes the best video editing in felton um what that means for them why it's more beneficial for their business so they have explained this the given some uh support to their explanations then they've gone on to product features and pricing strategy, what their idea will be again, um, you know, how many subscribers they've already got, how many views they've already got. They've thought about the selling price. They've said it's going to be seven pounds because even with the video length, you know, it, it will only be for their first, num you know, 100 customers. They've again thought about the target. Um, they've said their competition online sells for above seven. At the moment, we don't have a lot of support here that shows that, but we'll carry on and see if it's further on. What their raw materials will cost, they've said they have no raw materials, but again, we'll come on to that when we look at their resources. Uh, what their benefits of their product are and why they think that. Um, do they have a unique selling point and what that means for them? They have explained that. Uh, their 
product features and how it links to their aims and break even, um, why they're going to offer a certain discount, and again, how that links to their aims. Their pricing strategy, they've decided to go for penetration. They've given it a brief reason why. And they've said that their services will be purchased via social media. And again, giving an explanation of why they've chosen that um, and it, trying to link that with their target market. We go further into promotion. They've thought about, again, why they're going to choose each promotion, um, their cost effectiveness. Will it fit with their demographics, their target market? How are they going to do it? Um, some of it is explained better than others. So, you know, they've said, these bits are cost effective because, but the other, other bits are explained a little bit further, um, you know, links to social media pages and so on. Um, they don't have to have a website that was optional anyway, and they don't have to fill the social media bit either, but they have decided that they will have some social media. Um, <clears throat> and then they've looked at who their customers are. They've, they've actually got some research information here about their demographics, um, who their target market are, how the product will appeal to them, how the pricing appeals to them, and how the promotion appeals to them. So again, they've tried to link all this to their target audience and how they're then going to reach their customers. Their resources, they have decided, um, they've got the resources, their physical resources. Um, they've thought they may need to buy a hard drive, and that's the only thing they've thought about. They haven't necessarily thought about things like broadband costs, antivirus, um, firewalls, you know, electricity. They've not thought about those. So again, you've got to ask yourself, is that fully realistic? Have they fully thought about everything? OK, um, their financial resources, they've thought of video editing software because it's free. They've already, you know, it's there. Um, what their running costs are, they've thought nothing. They have said electricity of 50p per sale. That's kind of like a, we don't know where they've got that figure from, but they've not thought about, like I said, the other things such as firewall, antivirus, and so on, broadband use. Um, in terms of their market research, which they have used some market research, and I'm going to go up here where they've used it. If, apologies for the slow scrolling. They've used the market research here where they're looking at um, their demographics. They haven't necessarily used other research in this first part of the business plan. Um, and it would have been nice to have some other research um, on you know, resources on why they've decided to price it that way. You know, what do their competition price it as? And so on. So it's not necessarily fully developed okay that was the first part of the business plan so again i'm going to go back onto here it's the first part of the business plan it's the aims the features the pricing the promotion and the resources which mark band do you feel this falls into okay um is it limited is it adequate is it good or is it comprehensive i have given a few clues as we've gone through um, Marianne said, I assume they already have the equipment. They do already have the equipment. Um, so if I were allowed to add in prompt questions like the sample you're showing now. Can I come back to you on that question? Because I'm not quite understanding what you're asking. Um, but I'll come back onto that. Some people have said Mark Band 2. Some people have said Mark Band 3. Said 2. Said 2. Okay, got a lot of Markman too. Is budget 50 pounds? Yes, budget is 50 pounds, including everything. Got a Markman four here. Got Markman four and so on. So we're kind of tittering, it's a weird one, this one, isn't it? It's tittering between two, three and four. Okay, what did the principal moderator say about it? I'm gonna leave it on this Markman so you can understand it. Okay, uh, the learner, has actually shown good uh, application of knowledge and understanding of the requirements of the business plan. In terms of the aims, they are mostly detailed. They have used SMART acronym um, in terms of the financial and non-financial aims. They can be measured 
they can go back and see, you know, were they successful or not within that time period um, and so on. In terms of their product features, pricing and promotion, they are mostly detailed. They're mostly relevant to their target market. They've actually tried to link it to their target market as much as they could and quite well. It would have probably been better had they split their target market up even further, um, a little bit more. Um, the learners considered the features of that target market effectively. They've made appropriate decisions to appeal to that group with regard to affordability. Social media platforms may tend to appeal to a specific group though. So it would have been nice had they given more detail about how that promotion will appeal to specific market, market segments within their whole target market. That would have enhanced the work further. That's what the principal moderator has said. They have demonstrated a detailed and realistic understanding of the target market. However, some decisions are not fully supported with relevant research. They've looked at uh, demographics in terms of their research, but the other parts haven't got that research to fully back them up. So in that sense, you could say, well, it's not fully detailed. It's not fully relevant, okay? Um, it's not fully realistic because they've missed out things like broadband and so on and so on, okay? Um, so in that sense, I don't think it can fit into Mark Band 4. Right, then you go down to Mark Band 3. Well, is most of it detailed? Well, yes. Is most of it relevant? Yes. Have they thought about most of their resources? Yes. Okay. Have they thought about the research? Well, yes, but they're not mostly supported. There is some support, not most support. So that bit is not as great. In fact, the principal moderator did put it into Mark Band 3, but they thought, Overall, as a holistic approach for this one, it's the top end of Mark Band 3. So they gave it a nine. Okay, um, so yeah, they gave it a nine. Um, so if, if they go over 50 pounds, do they get penalized? Um, well, really, again, that's your judgment of, is it realistic? Does it fit the parameters? Um, you may penalize them once if for one section of the business plan, but you wouldn't penalize them again for a second part of the business plan because that's a whole separate mark uh, mark band system so I'm going to explain that in a minute uh, and wh why I've said that okay um, right so that was the first part if we now she tries to go on to it again look at the second part of the business plan these are the financial information so they've thought about their costs okay they split it up they put the cost and revenues um, They've done a break-even calculation. They don't have to draw the graph, but they've explained their break-even calculation. Okay. They've then done a 12-month cash flow. Now, all the figures they've put in here are accurate according to the costs they've used. And I've said that for a reason. According to the costs they've used, they are accurate. Okay, bear that in mind. All right. They then thought about... Uh, you know, given a short explanation of um, their closing balance and, you know, why and they won't be making any sales in their first month. They've then got profit and loss, again, accurate according to the figures they've used. Um, so they've done this profit and loss account based on those information you've got above, net profit, you know, and so on. They then have done a risk assessment, okay? They've thought about things such as too many tasks, lack of customers, they've explained each of these, the unexpected costs they may have, how they can mitigate some of these risks. What if the client's not happy? What does that mean for them? How do they mitigate that risk? Then they have looked at competitors, okay? They have looked at the competitors, they've given you some examples of those competitors. Examples of screenshots, thought about the price. This, some of this could go towards that, hitting that top end of Mark Band 3 for that first part as well. Um, why one competitor is stronger than the other? They give an explanation of that. Um, viability, remember that was that third trait for this. They thought about financial viability. They've back that up with 
using their break-even calculations, their costs, their cash flow. They've then thought about safety, why it's important. What are they going to do to mitigate that? Okay, ethical, that's a bit briefer, but they have included it. Legalities, what laws they need to be aware of? How will they do this? Their environmental impact, that finishes their business plan. They do have an appendix which has their market research findings. It would have been nice actually had they used more of these. Uh, I mean, this is again, just their demographics. It would have been nice had they used some of the other information they had in this, in that first part of that business plan. So you've got it there, would have been nice to, to maybe have some of the other information. If we go back then, for this task, for this part of the task, what would you give it? And why? Uh, which mark band does it fall into? Now I'm saying um, you wouldn't penalize twice for something. And the reason I'm saying that is so that it gives you a clue on which mark band it would fall into. They didn't mention broadband, antivirus, and blah, blah, blah in that first part of the business plan, but we've already penalized them for that. In the second part, given the figures they used, you've now got to think, which mark band does it fall into? I've got mark band three, I've got mark band four, mark band four, I've got three. Think about those traits. Are they complete? Are they accurate? Are they realistic? Have they done a detailed risk assessment? Have they thought about viability? Have they supported their viability statements, judgments? I've got a lot of mark band fours. Okay, so. What did the moderator say? The moderator has given this mark band four. I'm gonna put it out there straight away. It is comprehensive. They've demonstrated application and knowledge in relation to their financial planning, forecasting and records. They are complete. They're realistic using the figures they've got. Um, they're accurate, okay? Um, yes, some of those key costs such as uh, broadband and so on have not been included, but even though that limits the realistic nature of the forecast, they've already been penalized for those cost in inaccuracies in the previous mark band. So we're not penalizing them again for the same error. Okay, in the sense of that, that means that their records are actually accurate. The risk assessment is actually fully detailed. They have thought about potential threats. They've thought about their competitors. Um, they've thought about how mitigating those threats um, and risks that they come across, they are aware of their offering and why it's different to others on the market. Their viability is supported by financial data, safety, ethical, legal, and environmental considerations. In terms of a level two learner, it's fully detailed. It fits within Mark Plan 4, and the principal moderator gave this 12 out of 12. So, to put that out there for you, so you have it written down. First part was given nine, second part was given 12. Okay, that's how it fits. And I'm hoping that makes sense. So this is actually a really nice business plan. Just those slight um, bits that they've missed out and the fact that they could have used a lot more research they could have maybe split up their target market a little bit further to make it a bit clearer on those social media platforms that they decide to use. Um, had they had a little bit further research, not just um, that research that you've got there, had they had a bit more further research in that first part of the business plan, this would have been probably uh, the best you could get. It was actually not bad at all. A little bit further explanations as well in that first part of the business plan would have been better. Their second part is a lot stronger. So I'm hoping that makes sense to you. Now, <laughs> I'm very conscious of time. So um, we are now at five o'clock, literally got 10 minutes <laughs> to go through this one um, to give me time to do the rest. So I'm gonna go through this one with you as well. And I do apologize for that. Um, this second uh, enterprise is, is, they've called it, what they called it, Eco Aurora, 
is to do with um, sustainable pens. Please do look through this in your own time. I'm just going to quickly zip through what the differences are between this one and the first one you saw. So you can understand the fact that they are different and why they fit into different mark bands. OK, for this one, they've looked at uh, the, the person has thought about having these eco pens, you know, made out of sustainable materials. They've explained that a little bit. They've thought about their target market. They're going to be selling it in their school. So that's kind of their target market, uh, their market segment, how they're going to appeal. As you can see, these sections, even though they're filled in, they don't necessarily have as much development as that first learner did. So that's giving you a little bit of a clue here. If you look at their goods and services, they have given some explanation here. The fact that they want to expand, expand their range so in the future, different color inks and so on. So they have thought about forward thinking. They're given a budget sheet, not necessary. OK, I'm going to put it out there that some of the figures in this budget sheet don't, sorry, apologies for that, don't necessarily correspond with some of the other financial information later on. OK, so that's a good thing to pick up on. Um, they've then looked at their aims. They have put out a financial aim. Doesn't have necessarily a time limit. Would have been nice to. Non-financial aim is, again, does it fit into SMART? It's not necessarily SMART. Again, not as much explanation as that first learner. There is some. There isn't as much. OK. Uh, they've then gone on to their product itself, why they've uh, decided on the retail price of you know, how much it's going to cost them, what the benefits are, the unique selling point, how it again meets their aims. If again you notice some explanation, not as much as that first learner. They've decided on cost plus price, try that again, cost plus pricing, put my teeth back in, um, and why they've done that where they're going to sell it and again it's being sold in their school so that makes sense how they're going to communicate and if you notice they've given an example of a poster but it, compare this to that first learner and you can see that the explanation of their promotion methods they've given some in terms of cost, cost effectiveness how they're going to do it nowhere near as much uh, development in those answers and they haven't necessarily backed this up with research okay again the website and the social media they don't have to do so that's been left blank they have thought about their target market the fact that they're selling it to a school kind of does in a way limit their target market they have said during my market research i asked a question of you know who'd be over the plastic and so on and so on uh, and they've given a little bit of information about uh what the response was so 41 out of 50 people agreed and so on and so on um what their target market is how it's going to appeal again the explanations there is some not most not a lot uh they thought about their resources um it's again a little bit limited because um they're going to be selling it in their school so in essence the resources are kind of just there <laughs> once they've got in school um, really, their resources are only the cost of the pens and maybe a little bit of printing. They do. Um, going on to that second part of the business plan, they have filled in these costs. They have given a quick break even. They've not actually shown the calculation. Gives you a little bit of a clue there. And then they've done a cash flow forecast, but a 12 month cash flow forecast is required. Now, this kind of fits in more with the Peter Jones um, competition that is run by them. This kind of fits in more with that. So they've done a five day. They've only decided to sell these pens for five days. It's not a 12 month cash flow. Figures they've got are relatively accurate. I say relatively. Um, they've done profit and loss. Again, though, the profit and loss is for a five day period. It's not a year, which is actually a requirement. Um, a risk assessment, they have done a risk assessment. They have thought about things like lack of skills, unexpected costs. The explanations are not as full. They have stated some parts what they will do to mitigate. But again, the explanations um, 
are not quite as full as they could have been. They've got a little bit on their competitors in terms of this is Amazon seller. And then they go on to viability. They said it's viable. They've thought about their financial viability. Have they thought about the rest? Um, and if you think about what the other learner did for their viability and they looked at safety, ethical, environmental, legal, and so on, this learner hasn't done that. Okay, so if we go back onto the mark bands, apologies, for the first part of the business plan, think of what I've said, what marks would you think, where, which mark band do you think it fits into? Because I've not given you time to read through it properly. Based on the clues I've given you, <laughs> which mark band do you think it fits into? Um, think about it as such as, is it too simplistic or is there some partial detail? Is there partial relevance or is it mostly detailed, mostly relevant? Now, bear in mind the first learner got mark band three for that first part of the business plan. OK, um, it gives you a little bit of a clue. Um, is it fully detailed, fully relevant? Which mark band does this fit into? I've got a lot of uh, people saying mark band two. I'm going to put you out of your misery. You are right. It's in mark band two. The principal moderator has actually said it fits into Mark Band 2. The learner has demonstrated adequate application of the knowledge and understanding. Um, there are some of the elements of the business plan which are partially detailed, partially realistic. Financial aims are not specific. They are a little bit vague. Non-financial aims, again, you can't really evaluate them or measure them. So it would have been nice had they put them according to SMART, basically, if they use SMART aims. Their features are partially detailed. They've got a bit of reference to the needs of the target market, but they are limited. The learner has identified three market groups. However, the business plan doesn't necessarily focus on the different needs of the different groups in sufficient detail. So it's partially detailed, partially realistic. So it fits into Mark Band 2. And actually, the principal moderator gave it six. Um, there was a little bit in terms of viability. I mean, the viability, you could argue. Oh, sorry, I've got gone to viability anyway. Uh, there was a little bit in terms of supporting with research. Um, there wasn't a lot of support with research, but there was some. OK, that's why it goes into Mark Band 2. For the second part of the business plan, we're looking at financial records. Um, they have got a few errors. The fact that it's not a 12 month cash flow forecast, they've not shown the um, workings out of break even, they've not really explained their break even figure um, too well. They've stated what they need to do and not explained it. Um, even their profit and loss, it's not a 12 month um, period that they've looked at. So it's partially complete. Okay, it's com they have completed it, but it's partially complete. We can't say there's many emissions and errors. I mean, some may argue that you could because it's only five days compared to 12 months. But we've tried not to penalise them too much for this. OK, and that kind of answers that question of if they go over the £50 budget, where would you put them? OK, it could be that you do penalise them slightly for going over the budget, but you wouldn't penalise them, carry on penalising them. OK. Um, for example, the budget sheet uh, has, and I mentioned this, has slightly different figures to what's in the other aspects of the business plan. So it's not completely realistic and, and accurate either. Um, the costs of some of the promotional activities are not really considered either. They've talked about a little bit of printing, but that's as far as it went. A risk assessment, they have thought about some of this. And it, actually the risk assessment we could put into Mark Band 3 in terms of mostly detailed for some of it. Um, and potential threats, but a lot of it still falls into Mark Band 2. The viability is partially supported in terms of financial data, but they've not thought about safety, ethical, legal, and environmental considerations at all. Um, and actually, you could argue that some of that falls into Mark Band 1. But on the whole, the principal moderator felt that this fell into Mark Band 2. And again, they gave it the top end of Mark Band 2. OK, so that gives you a little bit of a, an idea of where that falls as well. OK, I'm hoping that's OK. Um, so that here you go. Here are the marks for that second part 
bit of work, six and a six they were given. Okay, I do apologize for rushing through it. Okay, Gina says, wow, I would have given it four. Yeah, you may have done. Um, the reason we're, we're, reason we're saying it is actually they did have a cash flow forecast filled in. And um, it was filled in for their trading period, if that makes sense. It would have been nice to have that 12 month cash flow. Um, and then it's like, well, now they've decided to go the five days. Again, it, it, you're meant to have a 12 month uh, profit and loss, but again, based on the figures they've used, um, it was okay. And you kind of can penalize them a little bit, um, but you wouldn't penalize them a lot um, in that sense. So in terms of the principal moderator, they gave this a six. They actually thought majority of the whole of that business plan went to that partially bit. Um, it wasn't mostly, it wasn't all, it was partially. It was better than Mark Band 1, okay? And they were, went with the holistic approach of overall, you could say the majority of those traits in Mark Band 2 were met. If the majority of the traits are met, and actually it's a good fit for all those traits in Mark Band 2, you would either give it a 5 or a 6. They went with a 6. Okay, so hoping that kind of explains that. Right. If you've got any questions, please do put them in the chat and I'll try and come back to them. Um, I have now 17 minutes to go through the rest. Um, very conscious of the fact you will want your evening back as well. So we'll go through the rest of this. We get lots of questions about resubmission and retakes. OK, um, once you've marked this learner work, yeah, you may make this decision that that the particular learners haven't met their potential. In that case, as with this legacy, as with the legacy qualification, you are allowed to give them a resubmission of evidence. The current rules apply, and it's that 15-day rule where you don't give them uh, specific feedback, you give them general feedback, and they can improve either all of it or some parts of it. Okay, you would allow them that resubmission. And you decide then at that point how many hours you're going to allow them to resubmit. You could give them the whole time again. You could give them bits. Because if they're only doing one part, let's say, out of five, you may decide actually they, they really only need another hour to try and um, resubmit and try and improve their work. So that's up to you. That time period is up to you on how long you give them. Then once they've resubmitted, they get one resubmission, you remark. At that point, you then decide out of all your learners what the rank order is. You go from highest to lowest. Okay, who's your highest? Then who's the next one? Who's the next one? And you just carry on going, okay, until you get to the lowest. You then submit those marks to the moderator. There is no then further opportunity to resubmit to improve marks for the same PSA. That stops. For the legacy qualification, you're allowed to do that. So once the SV uh, might give you some feedback, they then may authorize another resubmission. That no longer happens. Once those marks are submitted, they're submitted. There's no further opportunity to resubmit. If the learner then still feels they haven't met their full potential, they can choose to have a retake. And it's up to you if you give them that retake, they're permitted to retake once for each component in their program period. So it's usually that two year course period you may have. What that means is they can retake a PSA, but it's not the same PSA. It's the next series. They cannot do the same one. They would have to wait until the next series because by that point, that series they finished has already gone. It's done. Marks have been uploaded. It's done and dusted. And then the moderator looks at those and we'll come on to that in a minute. But then they can retake that component again, but it has to be for a different PSA. So it'd be likely different industries and so on and different sizes, for example, for component one, okay? And then if we go further, if I can actually move on, um, that's how that works. So that resubmission and retake. Now, sorry, let me just go back to that slide. Um, I'm gonna make a big note about the fact there is no minimum grade requirement for each component anymore. Um, they just have to get an outcome. A U is an outcome, okay? There is no minimum level one pass requirement for the new 
uh, tech award, like there is on the legacy tech award, which means they just have to get an outcome. They have to do something to get an outcome to get a qualification overall. That means that whole compensatory thing comes in. So they could do uh, maybe not great on one component, but they could pick up marks in another component. Um, and overall, it's those marks that count, okay? Um, whereas before, you're kind of limited sometimes on that past merit distinction they may have got in certain components, okay? That no longer happens. No minimum grade requirement anymore, as long as they get an outcome. Like I said, a U is an outcome. Right, in terms of the assessment series, I am not going to go through this. This is there for you to look at, but it gives you an idea of when the internal PSAs come out, come out in October and February, just if you're wondering. The October ones are moderated in December, January. The February ones are moderated in April, June, oh, April to June. Um, so they're different PSAs, two PSA releases a year. And then you'll have external, so which is component three. And um, the first one for that is January, 2024. There is no sitting this academic year for that because it's a terminal assessment rule. And if you've done the first uh, training on the getting started, that would have explained that to you. If you have questions on that, please do let me know later. Key dates, oh, I am not reading through this, but it's there, I've left it in the presentation for you to have a look through, okay? There are some key dates there, lots of dates. Right, the moderation process, how this works. Now, like I said, uh, you submit those marks. Learners, the sorry, the final marks are inputted onto Edexcel Online. Learners then will be randomly selected by Pearson Systems um, in terms of, you know, they will randomly select the learner names. And those are the ones that go to the moderator. The sample will be confirmed before the early moderation window opens in each series so that work can be prepared for that moderation. Okay. Um, this could be before you put in the marks. If the requested sample does not include the highest and the lowest marks, you've got to include those in. Okay. The sample size is there. Less than 10, it's all the learners. Um, up to 100, it's 10 learners. But you could potentially have a sample of 12, but if the lowest and the highest are not included in those learner names, and you'd have to include those as well, okay? Over 100 to 200, it's 15, and then over 200, it's 20 is your sample size. So you could potentially have 12, 17, and 22, if that makes sense to you there. Um, the learner work and the assessment record sheet for each learner is uploaded onto the learner work transfer service. And again, I'll give you the link for that and, and, and how um, it gives you a bit of detail on how that works if you've not used it before. Okay, I know people have already used it for the legacy qualification, but just in case if you haven't, I'll make sure that link is sent out to you. Both internal components will be sampled if entries have been made. Now for each component now, um, you have to make an entry for the series you are sitting. So if, for example, you've decided to do the October run uh, for component one, you have to enter them for the December series because that's when it's moderated. If you have decided to do component two in the February when the PSA gets released, you have to enter them for the summer um, series for that one, okay? And same like you would do for the external, right? For component three, you have to enter them for whichever series they are sitting in. So as long as they've been entered for that series, so if you, you know, in the first year, you may only have compo one component. In the second year, you're likely to have different cohorts doing both components. So one cohort doing one, the other cohort doing the other component. Both components will be sampled if, in that case, as long as entries have been made, okay? And the, and the cohort size is the number of entries that have been made, okay? And the same moderator will be doing both. So you can get the feedback. Um, from the same moderator. The process itself, the moderator actually will contact uh, your QN, your quality of nominee. They'll ask for a program lead to be able to give feedback once they've not in moderation. Where this is different from the legacies and, and where it is a little bit different from moderation in other uh, Pearson qualifications is we give you feedback, okay? 
we will give you feedback on your marks, on your rank order. We then give you two weeks to amend those marks. It doesn't mean you go and allow learners to, to make changes. No, you amend your marks at that point if we ask you to. Um, resubmit them again. And then, you know, the moderator then decides, is it still fit into, you know, national standards? Um, so if any discrepancies are identified, you've got those two weeks. If at that point we say, yeah, we agree with you. Great, fantastic, those marks go ahead. If we say changes need to be made, we give you those two weeks to make those changes. If after that we still don't agree completely with all your marks or your rank order, we then will make the changes to those marks, our rank order for that series, for those components. Okay, um, in terms of uh, amending marks and stuff um, for, for your centers to do it, that there, there will be deadlines and, and when to submit those marks and they will be out there. If a moderator uh, means that any lower mark learners would be placed above a higher mark learner or any higher mark learner should be placed below a lower mark learner in terms of their rank order, that will be considered. And that means that there may be an issue with your rank ordering. And that again may require changing once you've had this feedback. Okay. So I'll reiterate you put your marks on, we give you feedback. You have two weeks to make any amendments if we don't agree with your marks. If we agree with your marks, great. But otherwise, you've got two weeks. You amend your marks. If we agree at that point, those marks go ahead. If we don't agree, we make an adjustment. Okay, that's how this works. And again, that's just explained here. So if they're reasonably accurate, that you're awarded. If they're not, then we make a, 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 an adjustment. There is a moderation process video. Again, I'm going to send you that link so you can have a look at it. It is actually really helpful in explaining this process a little bit more to you. Okay. Um, in terms of quality assurance, I'm not going to go through this too much, but there's a quality assurance homepage. I'm again going to send you that link. It has loads of um, information on there. As you can see, the biggest important thing I want to point out on this is the amount of quality assurance processes you no longer have to do now on the current tech awards, on the new tech awards, I should say. So if you look at the legacy tech awards, you had to do things like registering, you had to have IV plans, you had to have assessment plans, you had to have IV of assess assignment briefs, you had to have, I can go on. Now, we don't have those things. We now recommend you do moderation, uh, internal moderation, internal standardization. There's no check for that. You don't have to tick a box to say you've done it. We now provide you with a PSA, so you don't have to IV it because you have to do what's in the PSA. There's no assessment plan, there's no IV plan, any of that. So it significantly should reduce your admin burden. Okay, uh, but that's a really important thing on this slide, this, this uh, right-hand side. But there is a QN page which explains a lot more of this, um, quality assurance page, sorry, and I will make sure that link is sent out to you. We now have uh, new assessment records. Um, and the way this works is the admin, you kind of need to fill in our mark sheet, rank order, and an assessment record sheet. We do have this new tool, which is, uh, and I'll make sure again, the link to the enterprise one is sent out to you. Um, basically that allows, that has it all pre-filled in and you just put in the marks and you can then put in a comment and it'll fill in the assessment record sheet for you. The assessment record sheet is already on the Pearson website. Um, and again, I'll make sure that link is sent out to you so you can have it all when you can have a look at it in your own time. There is a video on how to use this new tracker tool we have. Um, and again, I'll make sure that's sent to you. But I've actually had a play around on our enterprise one and it worked quite well. And it allows you to look, highlight on there which traits you may decide to give in which mark bands and it kind of then makes this picture for you of, okay, well now where do I think it fits? Which mark band do I think it fits in? And it is quite really handy. So if you wanna have a look at that, then, then please do so. You don't have to use it. It's there for you if you wish. Awarding, um, again, there's a lot of information on this slide. I won't go through it all, but basically um, each component has raw marks out of 60. Okay, the grade boundaries are then set on those raw marks. 
and they're done for each series for each component. So the gray boundaries can change for each component series on series. Once those gray boundaries have been done, those marks then can get converted into UMS. Okay, um, so uniform mark scale. That uniform mark scale boundary is fixed for the life of the qualification. They're actually in the specification um, in section eight of the specification. Um, and that's then decides on the overall grade. But it's the raw marks that the boundary changes and then that decides which UMS fit it, basically fits those raw marks. The raw marks uh, grade calculator will be published following each series. Um, so you can see roughly where it will fit in and why it was done that way. Um, but it will be done each series on series and it will be after results have come out. But it allows you to then sort of plan forward and see how it works. So it's not a guaranteed outcome for future series, but it gives you a rough idea, a benchmark. Okay. Uh, awarding is done as it is now. So it's done on, as it were, the UMS scores you get, and then they then decide those final grades. And it's grades per component, which go from, again, that level one pass up to a level two distinction, and then grades overall for the qualification go from level one pass up to level two distinction stock. And that's how that works. So that is how it works. And again, I'm not gonna go through huge amounts of this because of the time we have. Um, key things, um, and I'm not gonna go through the grading either. It's, it, it is explained there, the fact it is compensatory as well. And again, there's some information about results and, and when these come out. Key reminders, uh, PSAs will be accessed, can be accessed anytime from the date they're released. And again, at the moment, they're already out there for the October. Um, you must enter for each assessment series. We're currently on version two of the spec. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, there are already ad SAMs out for component three. Teachers, packs and textbooks are coming soon. The PSAs, like I said, have already been released. They were out on 3rd of October. The ESMs, which you should have been sent prior to this, uh, are also on the website. I'll make sure those are out. There is a video and guide for component one. I am going to send you the link for that. I don't think it's the finished version, but I'll send you what I've got. Um, and if I, uh, there are, there's, like I said, that template for the business plan. And then there is an FAQs section okay um which is again on the website really good actually loads of information on this and i'll make sure again that link is sent to you just in case you haven't seen it the support we have um many of you have contacted colin leith in the in the past he can be contacted through the portal there's subject advisor emails which are sent out you can even book an appointment with colin talk to him i think they're in half an hour slot he mans a facebook page our official one is this btech business and enterprise also, the Twitter handle at Pearson Econ Biz. You can contact him there. He actually will reply to those. And there's an RC expert service as well. All those links will be sent to you. If you wish to join our moderation team, um, there is an expression of interest, and I'll make sure that's sent out as well. Okay, I'm going to stop there and see if we have questions. Okay, I've got literally a minute. Um, would 50 pounds cover broadband, electricity, et cetera? How does this work with rising costs? I could not tell you. Um, I think it would have to be done. Think logically about this in terms of broadband costs for the period of time they might be working on something, uh, you know, like they, they thought of a 50p electricity cost. Um, it wouldn't have to be perfect, okay? Just that they've considered it. Um, are they allowed to retake C1 PSA and C2 PSA? Yes, they can, but it would have to be in the next series. Um, in the course of the qualification, they can do it once for each component. One retake per component, um, if that makes that clear, or Becky. One retake per component. So they could retake component one. They could retake component two. That's how that works. Okay. Does the company have to be registered to company house? Um, it can be family run. It all depends if it fits within the parameters of the PSA. You would cover sole traders, side hustles, anything along those lines. It does not have to be a limited company because that's the only way it would be registered on company house. How much detail can they take in the assessment with them in terms of notes? 
Um, happy to explain that. It's more explained in the getting started event. Um, in terms of detail, it would be notes, no analysis, no actually breaking down that information. So the notes they get in terms of the research they've gotten in terms of bullet pointed research, let's say for their pest, that's what they found out, political factors, they found out social factors. They would list those, they wouldn't do anything with it, okay? Uh, C2, does the filming of their presentation take place in school? Um, it doesn't have to, no. It can be within their own time, and it says that in the PSA. It doesn't have to be in their own, uh, at school. Um, the prep notes they take in, in terms of write-up period, it is in the PSA, in the notes to the PSA. At the front of the PSA, it does tell you a little bit more information about the notes they can take in. For component one, can I check they won't be able to screenshot any information as they have no access to the internet? Not sure what you're asking, Lucy. Um, they can have inf they can have maps, location reviews. Um, again, that can be in their notes section that they can then justifiably co copy and paste across. As long as they haven't done anything with it in their notes, they can then copy and paste it across. How does the entry process work? You would have to look in the admin guide, Tabitha, for that one. Um, and I'm hoping that has explained it. I am now three minutes over and I apologize for going over. If you have further questions, please, please, please do contact us through the portal, okay? Um, Colin will either answer it. It will either be one of our principal moderators. Um, if you have any questions about this training, make it clear in your question that it's about this training and it can come to me. Okay, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Um, I do apologize for zipping through things, but I'm conscious of the fact it's two hours and I have to get through a lot. So thank you very much. Um, have a great evening, everybody. It is already, the sun is starting to set to where I am already. <laughs> so have a good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. If you do have questions, do put them through the portal. Direct them to me if it's to me. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening.